Let's move on. Yep. This is good with tropicals too, like if you have like mango salsa can, and we're shrimp. Dump in dump. Dump. Okay. Yeah. With what? I'm sorry. Kind of like the Pacific Rim kind of flavors, tropical okay. things. Like if you have Rinse. like, okay, like, um, like you know, grilled shrimp with mango salsa kind of thing. That yeah. those kind of tropical flavors or yep. Indonesian food, um, lemongrass, citrus flavors are really good. Cilantro. Yeah. And spicy too. It can hold up to spicy. What do we have here? The Syrah. The oh, Syrah, five. and this is the Barrett Vineyard Syrah. So I make three different Syrahs, actually. There is a Santa Inez, there is a Napa Valley, and then the Barrett. The Barrett is probably right my favorite. Yep, a little vineyard designate. This comes from just a two-acre block of my... Now, is this your favorite because it's got your hubby's name on it? Well, it's my name, too. Well, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Good point. Right. Um, yeah, it's my favorite. You're like, yes. It's the most... <laughs> actually, it's the most layered and complex. Okay. I like I like them all. I like them all enough to make retail all price? Three, 80. 80. Yeah, on my list I sell it for 80. Got it. The Santa Inez sells for 45, the Napa sells for 60, okay, and then so the this Barrett is the big boy. Is, this and is how the much boy. and how much production do we see in this? 398 cases. Couldn't quite squeak out for Couldn't get two more? Uh, you you know, couldn't make you it would easy. Think, I know. I did make a few cases of mags. So if I count those then I <laughs> made it. my 400. Yeah, but not not Small a lot production. of production. Small production exactly. God, this nose is fantastic. Thanks. Yeah, a lot of uh, <clears throat> a lot of black fruit flavor, you know, dark fruit flavors totally. coming through, yeah. which is really a lot of fun. It is. And also a little bit of you get a little sense of terroir from this, which you you don't in most California wines. Like my, if I had the Santa Inez, which I think you mm -hmm. tasted, we did, and the Napa, it's more about the appellation, but not really the soil. In this little in this little batch of Barrett, you actually get some of that mineral, which you just don't see terroir very often in California, I don't think. I mean, you do sometimes, but not that often. And of my like three, it's hidden a lot of times. Here. Yeah, maybe. There's a lot of makeup with maybe. the oak going on. Oh, that could be. And and what kind of oak are you using here? Because I definitely get a little hint of that vanilla oakiness kind mm -hmm. of coming through. Is this a new oak product? What, what, it's you... all French, but it's not all new. What so, is the breakdown? Um, the breakdown would be probably, I think this vintage, it's about 45% New, new and then about um, 30 then divide the other two portions into whatever that Pass. would be 25 right. 30 percent mm -hmm. of each of once used and then and twice used, twice used. Got it. exactly so and an assortment of coopers Got so it. there would be you know a few different of my favorites in there for I, sure there's almost like a cinnamon spiciness mm -hmm. coming through in the tail end of the nose that I think is kind of neat yeah you know like it's kind of you get a little bit of that um, almost I wouldn't call it Kind of eggnoggy for me, like a little bit. It's the oak. I mean, it's, it's really you know, it, it's, it's there. Definitely a little bit of the oak, but really just sort of enhancing the fruit, not overpowering. Yeah, no, I, mean? I wouldn't say it's complete makeup coverage. It's not yeah. kiss. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's Thank give God. it a whirl. Yep. Yeah. Uh oh. Did okay. we just drop the tea? Tea. Let's we need more new. T we need, we'll get you tea, tea afterwards later. Yeah, warranty later. Run wine now. Don't worry about it. the rug is okay. seem much worse. Okay. Um, so this is a huge. It's huge. This has got a lot going on. Thanks. I like it. This tea smells awesome, by the way. Smell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that extra little note of throat. <laughs> oh, look, there's, there's some black tea nuances on the back end yeah, of this. Yeah, with a little licorice spice. Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of which, this does have quite a bit of licorice to it. It does you know, actually have yeah, a little bit. Yeah. It does. Um, that was really going to be my first tasting note on it. B you know, blackberries for days. So, like I just opened a blackberry hostess pie and just licked the middle of it. I, know, I, mean, I just love that blackberry flavor. And right now, I just when I just gosh, a few days before I left on this trip, we were out picking wild blackberries in the vineyard, and it smells like this. Just made like a little fruit cobbler. Were you oh, cheating the whole time? Just oh eating? god, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was a while before I even put any in my bucket. <laughs> <you know? laughs> Bo had quite a few in his. I was still eating them. But this is a very serious effort. As far as Syrah goes, I mean, listen, we'd be naive to not say that an $80 investment is a very serious investment for a bottle of wine. That being said, when you start looking at the quality here, and I would almost say it does have, it's almost like a Northern Rhone effort with a little bit of sunshine smiling on it. So it's got this true backbone characteristic that I think so many Syrahs in California are just completely lacking. They're very flabby, big fruit bombs, which is fine. And if that's your palate, God bless, mm -hmm. great. 
Um, but this has almost a little bit of dirtiness to it. Just like, I, I taste a little soil. I taste, there's a little bit of, you yeah, know, I like that. that. kind of mineral soil. And there also, is minerality. It's got like mid palate texture, almost a graininess in the middle palate that sort of reads as thickness without being cloying. It, it's so funny you said that. I feel, I feel like I, I should, I almost texture. feel like, I agree. I almost feel like I should bite this wine. It's chewy. Yeah. It is Which chewy. I like. Yeah. This is a very get, good wine. Get to get a fork. This is, if you're a hardcore collector, if you get on Heidi's mailing list, Mott, link it up. Little action there to get some people on your mailing list. <laughs> good, good, thank you. This would be something to look at to order. Yeah. Um, I think this is a really strong effort. This is a really, thank you. you know, I'm not scoring in front of the winemakers anymore, as you guys know, but this to me, just to give you a sense, is in that 94 ish, 95 point type range. I mean, this is really, this is the kind of wine that really took over my drinking habits over the last two to three years of drinking so much in Northern Rhone, mm -hmm. but I do feel at times that it's missing a little bit of that fruit that I'm looking for, mm -hmm. and this kind of takes both those worlds and does an extremely strong job in yeah, combining the thanks. two. thanks, thanks, without being over the top in any way. It's just, it's a big boy wine for sure, really intense and concentrated, but it's not you know aggressively what one you know way what or another. You know how some dudes are lucky, unlike me, and have really big muscles mm -hmm. and really built out? Some of them will wear you know, a white tank top, tight, and show you everything. Others just wear a nice suit, uh -huh. but you could see her like, that dude's got, he's jacked, Underneath, right? Just like yeah. a, and that's what this wine reminds uh -huh. me of, like a Doesn't big show you diesel dude. at once. No, just like kind of, you know. A more refined. Yeah. yeah. You like yeah. big muscles? Yeah, but I like it in a suit. It could be <laughs> in a nice suit. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't need to see everything at once, you know. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Okay. Now, maybe the cab, huh? The 05 cab. Okay. Let's talk about 2005 in context. You've worked with many vintages in California. Mm -hmm. What does 05 remind you the most of in history? How does it act on its own in any mm. way? Where do, you, where do you think 05 really, ha where's its place? 05 is a bit of a, oh good, thanks. A bit of a classic vintage, really. I think it's got um, kind of best of all worlds, where it's got um, ageability, it's got fruit, it's got um, power. It got fully ripe um, and is delicious, like right now, very, very drinkable and delicious. And what's but the also suggested will retail age, this? Uh, 150 for the cab. Only ballers like Mott can afford wines like this. Mott, how many, how many <laughs> cases do you want? Now, now with the 05 vintage, um, w compared to 04 and 06, how mm -hmm. would you rank them personally? Personally, I like... Um, I like it better than the 04. I think it's got a little more fruit than the 04, although the 04 was also quite a good vintage, but I like this one a little bit better. 06, by comparison, is a little uh, softer vintage, but very silky. It's a very, very seductive silky vintage. I was you just, think 06 will be a more uh, an earlier drinking yes, vintage? Yes, absolutely, I do. 05 may outlive it long, long, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. be, have uh, more longevity, but yep. the 06 is going to be more approachable earlier. And why don't we break, not break the news because I flirted with it a little bit, but there is some substantial hype around 07. Mm -hmm. Probably the biggest undercurrent yeah. of hype coming out of Napa. 01 had some good hype. Mm -hmm. 90, I mean, probably this is the biggest hype I've felt in the industry since mm -hmm. 97. What's it's, going on, Heidi? It's it's actually pretty true. Is um, it really ripping hot? It is. It is. We just bottled, I just finished a big bottling run of all my clients' wines, all the 07s. Working on the blends was such a delight. I mean, they really are, they're very dense, very concentrated. They're just action-packed wines. Um, it's a big time vintage. It's a big vintage. It what is. What would you compare it to? Delicious. Very velvety. Um, let's see. What would be the last thing we had that was anything even close? Um... I liked 99 a lot, but not too. across the board, but I love that vintage, you know, same kind of density and compact, um, powerful wine, but also really rich and ripe. I thought that was a really good vintage for that. Um, I liked um, 92 also was, for me, a lot like that, just that really lush, big, big round, mm -hmm, and can age. Now, this wine's kind of interesting. It's like, I'm listening to you, and I'm captivated, and it's just calling me big nose. I mean, it's really okay, coming yeah, across. You can smell it from here. I right? don't even need to approach right? the glass more than here. Yeah. There's These nice little glasses are great. They Aren't really they amplify yeah. the, everything that's there. We call it it's the so big funny. ass glass. That's a good name. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Mott likes it. Yeah. Um, now there's a little bit of like a peppery yeah. kind of thing going on even on the back end of this nose, which there I like. Is. The black pepper is really kind of yeah. screaming my name. Yeah, the spice and black pepper are definitely coming out. Tons of black cherry, just black fruit all, all across. 
has some of that nice sort of cassis blackberry, uh, blackberry and black cherry. There's also almost like a radishy kind of thing going on mm. for me. Uh, you know, it's kind of like, like I, I smell almost like a like a, a red radishy kind of thing on the, on the on the back end here. It's a spiciness, uh-huh. but it acts a little more vegetal to me. Yeah. So I'm almost you know gravitating towards red radish. Cool. <laughs> She's like, cool, kid. What the heck? Okay. All right, let's give it a whirl. <laughs> Um, have you ever picked up red radish on those? I mean, it's, it's a flavor I pick up from time to time. Yeah, I've never. And really I don't know how to thought about that, but I guess I I could kind of see it. I could see what you're talking about. Do you, do you eat radishes? The flavors? I love radishes. I eat them so much. You do? I yeah, love I love them too. That and English peas, I can eat mm-hmm. 24 seven. That's great. Yeah, I like them. This um, is extremely has a little bit of a gaminess to it that I like quite a bit, almost mm-hmm. like a beef jerky kind of thing mm-hmm. in the mid palate, which I think is quite. Intriguing, is good. Is this got a gaming kind of you know? You, you a little bit. That? Um, yeah, I've heard people say like teriyaki soy sauce kind of flavor a mm-hmm. little bit. It's sort yeah. of um, it does have a kind of a meatiness to it, but it there's does. also that kind of velvetiness that I love that's coming from. It's a it's a blend. Remind um, remember about it's cabernet, it's merlot, it's got a little bit of cabernet franc. The cabernet portion is coming from five different little vineyards. Um, partly from my home vineyard in Calistoga, some is coming from up on Pritchard Hill, sort of the little power element there, Cab Franc, initial palette. We talked about that a little bit, about the my count of six, which mm-hmm. works really well for this do, wine. Do, do. Yeah. And Why don't you tell everybody okay, about this? Um, I thought this was really clever. Yeah, I really thanks, took to it. Thanks. I wanted to steal it at all costs, but I just <laughs> knew for you, restraining, were, you were, but you were more powerful. You're like Yoda, maybe Vader, oh. but you're, you're too powerful for me to steal oh, it. Oh, no, so. no, no. Thank you, but I'm, happy, I'm happy to share it. Yeah, I, I will share it. It can, okay, it can become yours. Got yeah, tell. you got it. Anyway, it's just a really simple technique like for, um, for reading wine across your palate. And, and for me, I do it on a count of six. So I divide it up into initial palette, mid palette, and the finish. And so each of those three categories get a count of two. So there's kind of the beginning of the beginning and the end of the beginning. Mid palette would be three and four, beginning of the middle and the end of the middle. Oh, here's my phone. That's right, okay. we're very, I mean, at least look, <laughs> it, you wanna yeah. make sure it's okay, not the kids? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll keep you entertained. Okay. So this guy walked into a bar and he saw Mott. And he's like, hey Mott, where's it getting? <laughs> at least wanna turn it off. Don't worry. All right. So, so far, okay. you, 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 so, you threw tea on my floor. I know, you my phone's turn ringing, phone. I'm like blowing my nose. I'm You're, so sorry, gosh. So it's just <laughs> not worked out. Okay, so, so back to, so the finish would be five and six. So the beginning is one and two, mid palate is three and four, Do-do. and the finish is five and six. So when I taste wine, I want one, two, three, four, five, six. This just silky impression from start to finish. Have it running on all cylinders, no holes in the program, just complete wine. Everything ha- is all filled out. And I was describing Cabernet Franc for me when I taste it by itself is often all one and two and the flavors just drop off. You've probably all had wines like that where nice burst of fruit but then boom it's gone. There's no three, falls four, off five, a cliff. six. It falls I off call a them cliff. cliff wines. It just jumps right off. Or if they come back I call them, you know, hollow wines or wine, we call donuts. It a donut right? wine, yeah. We call I call it Casper the Friendly Ghost. Yeah, because you can, can walk right, right through. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, and there's no three and four. Well, Merlot is often three and four, but a lot of Cabernet is three, four, five, six, and it's rare to find Cabernet that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So you kind of because aromatic the wine. they're just kind of yeah. There's the just different the different yeah. components. So when I taste and make a blend, I'm looking for you know any I'm looking for any holes. What about a Syrah? And what can I fill in? Syrah um, is pretty complete by itself. You almost never need to add any blending wine to Syrah. You get and that's <laughs> Barrett, that's 100% Syrah, and it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Do you does that make you at some level respect Syrah more than most grape bottles? You know, I've never thought about it like that, but probably. And it sure is fun to make. I mean, be, you know, it is. It's a blast to make. It's a very easy keeper. It's very well behaved in the winery. Um, Do you feel that people have taken kind of advantage of it? And there's a lot of boring efforts that just it's plop, true. make it high alcohol, big, pound the fruit, kind yeah. of like like a, like stack it high and let it fly. Like, like an unruly eat. child. Yeah. They haven't done any training. There's no refinement yeah. there. And yeah, I think... You and know, it's hurt the brand of Syrah overall. It has, and it's such a shame because it can be a beauty. Um, 
and it can be that way from different regions. I love the one I make also from San Inez. It's very juicy. It's very more red fruit forward, cooler climate, obviously. But sure. Just well, that could be an advantage, right? Purely, With the cooler, purely delicious wine. The cooler yeah. climate and Syrahs I tend to like quite a bit. Yeah, me too. But it doesn't have to be unruly. It doesn't have to be awkward or over overly alcoholic or overly gamey or whatever. You can make those things in balance. And, and I think those are the better wines, you know. So I, I think you're right that the, the fact that Syrah is such an easy keeper in the winery people tend to maybe maybe they've gotten a little bit lazy with it and just I think let they it have. make itself and you still do need to you know use some refinement there and, and get it in balance and, and what's the production of the cabernet cabernet 450 small numbers across small the small numbers exactly so all I told Brandon pretty small they're all nothing more than you know around a, around five six hundred cases at the most and the, the cabernet 450 the Syrah was only 400 and you have a mailing list sign up on the website right I do okay so we'll do that oh, yes. now you were coming, Brandon told me, oh, you should show her, yeah, that's just a little rinse. Okay. Brandon said, oh, what about this wine? Why don't you know, tell us? I'm I know we caught you. Yeah. That you have that. So this is uh, Woman of the Vine Cellars 2006 uh, Syrah, and this is about $120, you know, suggested retail. Tell us about this. Okay, this is actually a custom labeling that I did for um, a woman named Debbie Brenner that wrote a book called Women of the Vine. And each of the chapters are about different winemakers um, uh, from mostly, not, not all from California, but a number of them are. Far majority. Are, yeah, yeah, are, are from, um, are winemakers from California. And then she contracted some of us to make wine for her under her label. So I um, made my Napa Syrah, some of my Napa Syrah go for the Women of the Vine label. And she puts, you know, our signature mm -hmm. on there and it's um, Heidi's Syrah right on there. Um, I think it's Carol Shelton made Zinfandel mm -hmm. for her. A yes, few different did. people have made different ones. She makes great wine. She does. I'm a big fan. Me too. I'm and a big fan. Plus, she's Carol. just a sweetheart. She's yeah. such a nice, nice woman. So this would be the 06 uh, Napa Valley Syrah. So is this the same Syrah that we would see basically from your? Yes. Same exact. Same. Very same cool. Same exact. Yeah. I cool. just labeled up a few, um, yep. a couple hundred cases for her under her Good. brand. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So cool. So we got to do the 05. Syrah, right? Yeah, yeah, but the, we did the bear. The and, this, bear. and this is the Napa version of what. This got is it. the Napa Valley. Got it. Mm -hmm. got it. So I have three. I have the Santa Inez, yep. Napa Valley, got and it. then the Barrett. Got it. Now this is aromatically explosive. Is what well. it is. Okay, and that's an example of 06. I mean, it's just approachable much sooner. It, it is explosive in the nose. I haven't this actually. This is like almost like a black raspberry, like a dark raspberry kind of thing going on. Oh, it smells great. I haven't had it since we bottled it, so this is fun to go back. Very vibrant. Um, the, you know, there's definitely, you know, I'm, I, as you guys know, very sensitive to the oak, so I feel it. But it's not awful. It's a little bit more obvious to me than the 05 Barrett. Um, but it's not obnoxious by any stretch of the imagination. Very well structured. The fruit is, is, is really prominent. I mean, it's, it it's is. quite it's, in your face. And it's quite explosive in the mouth, actually. Yeah. It's just, it's a big one. It umbrellas. Mm -hmm. It really does. It opens up mm -hmm. and explodes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but still pretty silky at the same time. It's sort of explosive it's and silky. Yeah. And it is approachable. It's, it's a, yeah. definitely a more approachable, drinkable yeah. version of even a wine that's a year older than a Barrett vineyard. Exactly. Yeah, and it's going to get a little more bottle age, which will even soften it more, so that'll be good. What's going on with your uh, wine drinking these days? What are, you know, I'm sure some people would want to know. What are yeah. some of the two or three best wines you've had recently that recently. maybe... Recently. Has anything caught I've you off guard lately? Anything interesting? Um, we tend to just, you know, we drink a lot of our own wines that we're working on. Usually, like, as we're bottling, we're kind of working on the last minute, you know, things that we can do before we bottle. So a lot of the current releases and, and up-and-coming wines have been tasting a lot of 07s, of course, lately that we've what we've been talking about. Are you but, drinking um, outside oh, of California? I have oh. a fun thing I need to tell you about. I'm excited. This is good. This is going to be a new wine. Exclusive! Yeah. <laughs> um... Just bottled for the first time. It's called, it's a new label for me called Pirate, and it kind of is the other. I love it. Yeah, Arg. Yeah. Okay. Arg. Yeah. The, the the toast is like this. Arg. R for sure. Okay. Um, People are pumped right now. Yeah. It's a La Serena wine, but it's a completely different package. It um, it'll say produced and bottled by La Serena wines on the back, but it is a little squatty bottle for starters. It's a bottle about this big. It looks like a broad shouldered little rum bottle. Um, okay. So it's okay. short, and it comes in six packs that the box looks like a little treasure chest. It's super fun. 
the blend is, get this, seven varieties, um, sort of like Treasure of the Seven Seas would be the idea. I love so where this is going. It's pretty much a Cabernet Syrah blend, but there are bits of Grenache, um, Merlot, Petit Verdot, Petit Verdot, yes. Petit Syrah, and Cabernet Franc. So is that seven? I think that's, that's seven. seven. Yeah. And the back How label is a blast. The back label is all in pirate speak. It starts with a vast, Amy. Y- salty bilge rats kind of thing. Oh, and then man. it goes into Cabernet and Grenache <laughs> and little Piet Vardo, all the R's in there. And so that's awesome. Um, it's really fun. Yeah, I made, um, it's all in six packs. I made about, um, it's equivalent to 750 cases. So almost 1,500 six packs. And what's going to be the suggested retail? Seven, uh, 1,400 little pirate chests. I love it. 50 bucks. I love it. Yeah. It sounds like a wine it's library delicious. exclusive. You will love this wine, I'm telling you. It's very An exclusive hype. Yeah. You're going to like it. It's No, it's no, no. Cool. You're dodging the question. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really cool. Yeah. And what, is that going to be 07? 07. So good vintage yeah, to start with. good vintage. And I made and why, all these little I mean, experiments. You really went fun on this, huh? I had Pirate. fun. I had fun. Well, I've got the silky, elegant La Serena wines. Pirate is sort of the counterpoint to go with you. the mermaid and the pirate. And pirates I like it. would have the mermaid on the on the front. And the I label, the doing. label is great. The label is like an old treasure map, and it's actually taken from an old map of the Napa Valley. So it's got Napa River, it's That's got cool. Mermaid Cove, which has the little big surprise La Serena Mermaid in sure. there. So I had fun with it, kind of personalized to my own Good for stuff. you. Yeah. Hi, thank you Very so fun. much for being here. Yeah, this thanks was a so lot much of fun. for having me. You yeah. have anything else you want to get off your chest to the, to the um, wine drinkers of the world? True confessions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> good. All good. Thank you so much. You get to ask the question of the day. It's a tradition here on the show. Okay. The guest gets to ask question. What would you like to ask? You'll get 300, 400 responses. What would you like to ask people that are watching? What are you curious about? What can, what can you do a little? What's on your mind? What would you like to see answered? Um, I would like Yummy. to know, um, I would like to know everyone's feeling about Syrah in general. For me, Syrah, I like it so much more than Pinot Noir, and I don't understand why Pinot, people like Pinot Noir so much more than Syrah. Because Hollywood told them. I know, but for me, do you want to make I, an indie film, film together? We should. <laughs> Mott, you ready? Get the camera ready, Mott. Yeah, We're going. That's my question. Is that's I, a great because question. I think that Syrah is so much more versatile, and even with the three different Syrahs that I make, they're all so distinct and different. I just think they're so delicious and have so much more to offer that I, I just think it's a better wine. And so I'm wondering, you know, what people think about that. I like that And question. would like them to, you know, give it a shot. Oh, also I have a present for you. Awesome. While you're getting that, I'm going to give presents, a Presents, presents. A little Uh-oh. serene hat. you got to have that. Uh-huh. I like that. I will wear <laughs> I that. I got the wristband. You, you got, got the, the wristband. Yeah. I got the hat. <laughs> big shout out. Happy birthday to La La Lori. Big Vaniac uh, and Thunder Cruise member. Uh, Crush It Cruise announcement coming Monday, hopefully. Uh, and Heidi, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks very much. Thank you so much for being here. It was a, lot it was of a fun. real pleasure for oh, me. Likewise. You, with a little bit of me, are only hoping to change the wine world as much as she has. See you next time. Thank you.